six old. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. That was fast. I'm going click, and here we are. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, we're gonna do the condo update because we haven't done that. Yeah, this is the halfway mark for, for Barry. Let everybody know. So we took the sales of yesterday, so we got the numbers for that to go. And not surprised the decrease, but I'll let you kind of do the intro and talk about the numbers, and then we can dive a little bit deeper. Yeah. So the sales it are 50 percent less there was 20, 46 last year and only 23 this year yeah i know transactions are down and you know we've seen the condo market struggling but on april they kind of had a rebound we had an increase in transactions yes if i'm mistaken so again folks this is just the halfway point so there's still two weeks to make up there's still a lot of momentum the market's okay but there's just a lot more inventory than there was a few weeks ago Right. Well, you know, the other thing is, did because there was a little spike in April, is it like leveling out now? Well, it goes up and down, right? All of a sudden it goes strong for a couple of weeks or a couple of days. And then it, all of a sudden what happens? It gets quiet for a bit and then it goes back up. It's very up and down. So, and I think we, we you know, we've done enough videos in the condo market and, we, you know, some of these buildings that we talked about before, have very high fees. And when you're talking about adding a mortgage onto that, it becomes very expensive. To, oh, it does. To and you know what? It's funny because um, here we go. Here's the, here's the numbers. So between three and 500, 12 sold. Which now, there's not a lot in the threes anyway, right? They're more in the fours. Yeah, there was. Right. There was some though, right? Like a bell farm. I forget some other ones in there, but look, there's some of them, but again, some of those three to five ranges, you know, you can get a two better, but the condo fee is 900 bucks. I know. So this is what continues to push people away from those cheaper amounts, price points until you open up the condo fee and go, Oh, wow. That's going to put me back a little bit. And we know the buildings, we know the buildings with low con common fees in, in the community because they're you know zero to five years old they're cheap and yeah seem to be selling okay because well of yes considering look like so we have 69 actives mark and so that's the highest inventory of condos but it's also we have 12 solds which is the highest amount of sales yeah so hang on one second i'll get my lovely calculator out I'm doing the same thing right now. Are you going to figure out the percentage? Yeah, so seven, so seventeen percent of of the, of the inventory is selling in that three to five range, right? So, yeah. what's the other eighty three percent doing, right? And we've seen double digit, triple days on market for some of these buildings that you know have these condo fees that are high. Allen Street, Blake Street, Bay Club's kind of high. Um, I still think the nautical one bedrooms, they're five and change, but you've got a lot of amenities there. So I don't find that expensive. Uh, underground parking, locker, pool, hot tub, sauna, games room, gym. So not bad, but you know, it's, it's tougher out there. Yeah. For, for so, and the five to $600,000 range, which you would think isn't really, I'm that high of a range. I mean, it's still high for a condo, I guess. Yeah. But there's 59 and only five sales there. 8.4% 8. 8 product is selling, right? So, you know, we're going to see that consistently. We've seen a lot of inventory building up both on the condo market and freehold, and which is kind of normal too for, you know, getting started in the spring, weather's getting better, list, list, list. But you know, I say this every year and, and, and no different than last year, the year before, and this year's the same way too, is buyers just seem to come out a little earlier. They start looking in February then they get kind of panicky going, oh my God, it's sold over list. We need to buy. We need to find something. We need to get onto something right away. Well, and we, we, the last two years, we have seen a bit of a jump in January and February. Consistently. Yes. Consistently. Consistently. We have. Right. But is that what takes away from now? Maybe, maybe. Right. I was busier back then than I am right now. Like yeah. I have people getting, you know, qualified and, you know, we want to do this. Our house is selling and 
St. Catharines and we want to move up and it's going good. So, you know, lots of things brewing and, and coming together, but I, I really, you know, think it's a good idea to sell those properties before coming up and going house shopping and condo shopping. Um, Cause again, no one likes these conditional offers. Whether well, the and the market's slow everywhere. I have a client in Hamilton that I bought with and I've been watching on like uh, a couple on her, in her area and they've been listed for like three months and they're not selling and they're not high priced either. They're low prices. So yeah, it's some, and then you talk to other agents in, in North York who I know, and they're busier than all hell. So it just depends, right? I mean, certain areas are doing well, but you know, I did a little exercise and we're going to cover another video, but I'll talk about it briefly here. There's a lot of inventory throughout just not Simcoe County, but we're talking North York too. Yeah. And break down the sales component to inventory, 12%, 8%, 20% selling. What's the other 80% doing? And and my buddy made a good point yesterday and we're talking and he said, you know, listing agents and listing agents are just looking at what the, what the neighbors got their theirs listed for or the street over somewhere. And that's what they're benchmarking the pricing on. Today. I know. I went, Gary, you're 110% right. Because we see this in Innisfil more than any, any other community that we cover often. We see that all the time. Yeah. They just blend right in instead of spending a few hours and really going through listings and seeing what's listed, how many days on market, how many price changes have they had, how many terminations and relist and different strategies have they done. All the homework is done for, for any one listing a new property today. Don't go off, don't benchmark off what it is around the corner of a similar property. Cause that's no, just- No, I, I actually went to a listing appointment in Innisfil a couple of weeks ago and I showed him there was really only one comparable, like true, true comparables. It, it was his house, exact same house. Yeah. And um, it had been listed for a long time and it had started at, you know, I can't remember what it was, 849. And it, it, it had been going down, down, down. Yeah. And I said to him, well, like, there's no point in going where they are because it's not selling at that point. It's not selling. Someone else has done the, done the homework for you. They've tested it. You got days on market. So I really believe a lot of the pricing is wrong. Not so much in Barrie, but in Innisfil, the pricing's wrong. A yeah. lot of and you know we're still seeing some pricing off here in different ranges but anyway that's just the way it goes a again so, listen at the six to seven hundred range there was four sales only 34 actives and as and in in barry like there's not that many you know high and really expensive condos to begin with right they're limited um so four out of 34 and then seven to 800, one out of 16, and then the eight to 900, seven active, zero sales, nine to a million, four yeah. active, zero sales. Yeah. But we finally got that one huge listing sold, eh? There was, um, there's 13 actives over a million and one of them sold and you were even shocked because it was there quite a long time, wasn't it? Yeah, and if, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the Grand Cayman at Nautica, 1,884 square feet, which is a beautiful floor model. I think it sold 1.3 and change. I'm not 100, but that's where this. I mean, it could be higher, but I saw it the other day too, and I was looking through the getting this prepped up. But you know that you know it's always in demand, right? It takes a special buyer to afford. I think the condo fees are probably 13, 1400 bucks a month. But what a unit! But this seven to eight to, you know, in this call it seven to nine range, you're talking a two bedroom in Nautica or Toronto street. Right. And we've yeah. covered dad, we've covered off that range a lot. And we've seen a lot of, you know, we've gone over those details in Nautica where we've seen some, you know, price drop, price drop and, and triple days on market before they sell. Right. And again, I look at the inventory all the time in that building because I have people wanting a certain model and a certain view it ain't coming up. It's just not coming up. And there was an, an Antigua listed. I sent it over to my folks, but again, the, it was the wrong views north facing. So I was, yeah. was going to say like the problem is in those condos along the water, even in yours at Lack House, um, the view and your, and the position in the building is like everything. So it matters, it, it matters a huge amount. Yep. So yep. if you if you have one with a crappy view or some of them at Nautica, depending which building, yeah, both buildings, if you're on the side that faces the other building, 
-hmm. Mark, I can see into their living room, man. Yeah, I, know. I know they're close and you can see it. And I know. And then the ones that are on 33, that there's that green, you know, marsh area protected wetlands area. And we know there's a building going there. Right. So yeah, there's already a sign up, eh? Right. So there's a ton of projects coming on, but you know, in that eight to nine range, back to that range, um, there hasn't been any new listings at Lake uh, Lockhouse um, on this water side in that one bedroom den slash second bedroom model like I have, right? They're gone. There's some city view ones and there's some higher price point ones. But again, that buyers, you know, takes a while to sell that those those units because of the price point today. <laughs> and people qualify. Well, well, and I think in condos, downtown Barrie, like on the clients that I've had and shown, I mean, they're pretty damn particular what they want. Like most of these are retirees and they want what they want. And if they're not going to get that, then they don't sell their house. They wait. 100%. They're patient because they don't got to move. They're comfortable in their home. But if the right unit comes up and they're looking at everything, right? They're looking at parking. We almost did a deal at Nautica last year, but go get your car and try to park it in this parking spot. So they drive, got the car, bring it over. Can't, can't, there's, has a pillar in the wall. Like it's great if you had a moped, but you couldn't get a small car and like you couldn't do it. So then what are you going to do? We're going to park your car. You got to sell this unit later on down the road. This problem isn't going away. Mm -hmm. Right. So that unit just came off the market didn't bother selling it, but had, had the right view, but the parking location was not right. So, and they, at 825, they wouldn't get 825 for it today. They'd be in the mid sevens. I don't I don't understand why builders do that. I've shown some condos where like I, I know what you're saying there's like a wall or a pillar. Yeah. And like you can't even you can't get like you can't even get in and out. It's tough. You could you'd have to get out of the pot, you'd have to jump over the passenger seat to get out. You couldn't open the door because it's not enough room, right? So hard selling. And again, for structural reasons down there and the whole bit, like someone gets shafted along the way with it. But, you know, when you go to sell that unit, holy cow, there's there's where the struggle begins. Well, right? and and even when you buy it, buy that off a developer, they say you get a parking space. So you wouldn't even have, you, you would have never dream that you couldn't park a proper car in it. No. And that's the thing. And to that point, people should really look because, you know, when you're buying off a piece of paper, you're buying a floor plan. You're buying parking, you're buying a you know a locker, but you kind of really don't know where they are. Show me on how the map. big they are. Look at your locker. You told me it's useless. It's useless. You, I couldn't fit snow four snow tires in there. It's no good. It's like, oh, well, take the Christmas tree and all the decorations because this isn't fitting in the locker today. Moving day. There's just limited space, so. And not everybody has a locker in here, but keep in mind, you know, it's nice to have a bit of storage space, tires, ski, the amount of ski equipment that I have. Um, it's in closets. We're right? lucky I have some decent closet space in here because if I didn't, Jesus, it'd be at your house. Yeah. <laughs> right. So anything else about condos? I, I just think we're, we're down transactions also in the freehold. So we're not surprised with this. Let's see what the next two weeks you were talking about in the market today that you saw a lot of conditionally sold update on the Barry real estate board. So there's activity and folks just don't think that, that, Oh, the market's really bad because it's not really bad. Dan had a spreadsheet. We're going to cover off another video, um, with freehold and it's pretty flat to last year with sales and kind of pricing to it as well. We are seeing some pricing pressure in the higher ranges to, you know, come down a little bit, but that mid range is still pretty strong. Right. It's just, you know, we're in that little trend right now where I just think there's still some uncertainty for a lot of people. And no one's now, gonna do anything right now. I, I just don't not a lot of people, right? I mean, you know, we know what's coming. You know, again, we anticipate a rate decrease. People say no. Well, I, I think it's going to. I just don't know when. June, July. People say not in June, July. They're banking off that great job reports, but it's all seasonal workers. So in part-time positions. So Time will tell. No one has that crystal ball to see what's going to happen, but but we do know. I wish what, I did. Yeah, I wish we knew that what was going to happen. But you know, history tells us we know what's going to happen. These rates are going to come down. You know what I mean? We got a six point one percent unemployment rate in this country. The U.S. has got three and change. Ooh, anyway, have a great weekend. 
Oh, so hit the like, hit the subscribe, yes. drop us a comment or a question. You want that. As Thea oh. says, Mark, ring the bell. Ring the bell. <laughs> Please do. I like that one. Yeah. Hey, see, see ya. ya.